A huge Naxal attack in Chhattisgarh in which a BJP MLA and four policemen were killed this evening just 48 hours before polling in this area. Maoists ambushed the convoy of the MLA Bhima Mandavi using a powerful IED. Chief Minister has also called for a high-level uh, meeting. Well, uh, let me just go across straight to our guests uh, this evening. We have uh, Mr. Swaranjit Sen, Noel Swaranjit Sen, the former DGP of Andhra Pradesh, joining us shortly. Shama Mohammed of the Congress here, is here with us. Mr. Deshratan Nigam, uh, uh, senior political analyst and lawyer, here with us as well. Uh, just to get your first thoughts on that, Mr. Nigam, you know, clearly an attempt by Naxals there in Chhattisgarh to send a message just on the eve of polls. Uh, about clearly where they stand on, on, on the election issue. Uh, but this is a pretty dastardly attack. My sincere homage to the, those who have died. There was also another incident in Kishtwar in Jammu and Kashmir where Chand Khan Sharma, RSS leader, was also gunned down by terrorists. He also succumbed to the injuries. So these are very, very serious issues and certainly an effort to derail the electoral process. And you know, Mao, Maoists out there are uh, boycotting the polls there. And making an IED is not a simple thing. It requires a lot of inputs, a lot of uh, coordination from various stages and people. So this needs to be tackled very, very seriously. I mean, they are challenging the state because you are directly attacking the democracy here. Well, uh, Shama, it's, it's, this is something, violence that has claimed lives across the political spectrum. You had more than 20 Congress leaders who were killed just some years ago in Chhattisgarh. Uh, and, and, you know, w w what is the Congress saying on this tonight, again on the eve of elections? It, it's very important, is it, then for political parties to demonstrate uh, that, you know, we will defy this, this kind of attempt to derail democracy? No, um, yes, we lost 27 people uh, in 2013, including uh, Mahendra Karma and uh, Nand Kumar Patel, the, the chief also. And, you know, it was, it's a dastardly act. Something has to be done. And first and foremost is my deepest condolence today because an MLA has passed, passed away along with the, the, the rest of the people. And it's a really sad day. Nothing like this should happen. But I believe that, of course, there should be, we know that this area is a very sensitive area. So there should be enough forces there. And also intelligence reports should be taken into account. If, if you know they know that the Maoists are working there, we need better intelligence and we need to focus our CRPFs here to see that these things don't happen. It's very, very imperative. And today uh, we stand with uh, the MLA uh, in solidarity you know, with the Bharatiya Janata Party also. They've lost somebody to this dastardly act of, uh, it's, it's a terrorist act. Well, uh, I want to go across to my colleague Vishnu Shom uh, at this moment. And Vishnu, uh, what more details are you hearing uh, you know, about this attack? Well, I've just spoken to the Director General of Police in Chhattisgarh and he's told me that uh, the MLA was actually advised not to travel on this particular route. This is a route which was taken, which is not taken very frequently. There are very few vehicles over here and uh, this route is not sanitized properly. So the Director General of Police telling me that despite at least two attempts by the police uh, to phone him, uh, in fact, they did phone him, they did reach him and they did tell him not to take this route. He decided to go ahead with this route. Now, this was on the basis of the MLA knowing this area very well. This is an MLA who operates in that region extensively. He felt confident of actually traveling over here and he did. This was a convoy of three vehicles which did, uh, which was passing through this road. It was a deserted road. It is not a sanitized road. It was his vehicle which was struck by the improvised explosive device. The other two vehicles uh, had uh, other policemen in it. There was a gunfight which took place with Naxals. Um, and uh, the total number of people who lost their lives, inclusive uh, of the MLA, uh, Bhima Mandavi, was, uh, was five, as we've been reporting. Bhima Mandavi lost his life, as did his driver and three PSOs, uh, security officers of the Chhattisgarh police. Uh, so the Director General of Police telling us that it's an extremely unfortunate area, but that there are parts over there which cannot be sanitized. So this is information that we are attributing to the Director General of Police uh, in Chhattisgarh, Mr. Avasti, who I spoke to just uh, about 10 minutes back. Uh, and we will play out that interview the moment we get it. It takes a little bit of time uh, to actually uplink these interviews from, from the areas where uh, he actually was. Uh, so this is important information coming in right now. It, it gives you a clear idea of the threats uh, that, um, that, that political leaders face. Uh, we've had a terrible tragedy in 2013. 28 people actually lost their lives, 27 of them directly linked to the Congress party, uh, including the senior leader VC Shukla, the head of the Congress party in Chhattisgarh, other leaders as well. 
Uh, this, I believe, would be the, the, the second worst attack on political leaders uh, leading up to the elections. But the right. Director General of Police, Nidhi, once again telling us that this was an area not sanitized. The MLA was asked not to travel. Uh, he decided to go ahead based on his understanding and experience of that area. Well, we have Mr. Noel Swaranjit Sen, the former DGP of Andhra Pradesh, who's been also at the forefront in his career in fighting um, Maoists and Naxals. Uh, uh, Mr. Sen, you know, your, your thoughts on this? I mean, it's very unfortunate uh, that, you know, our, our paramilitary in particular is, is uh, in a sense, uh, constantly targeted, uh, you know, through these Maoist ambushes. And, and today, uh, you know, as Vishnu was mentioning, uh, one of the deadliest attacks you're seeing on, on, a, on a politician, uh, an MLA being killed as well. Yeah, it's, it's really very, very sad, right? I begin with that. But I would also like to say that uh, those who live by the sword or allow people to live by the sword will die by the sword. Now you see, for 15 years, there was another government in power and they were not able to, to weed out the Naxals. In just about two uh, years or so, do you really expect the present government to be able to weed out these guys? I mean, I feel all this which is happening is a legacy of the past, the past 15 years. But there is some lesson to be learnt. If somebody should cultivate a snake, that snake will come back to bite you. So, while things like this happened in the previous regime, it is sad that they are happening in this regime also. Now, we have to be very, very careful about how we approach this, this whole problem. Very easy to say that there is intelligence failure. There was no intelligence failure. The MLA was told that it's not safe for him to go. He was able to browbeat the poor constables who were with him or little higher rank, which is not such a difficult thing to do. And of his own free will, he forced the police to react the way he did, they did. And in the process, he was, he was ambushed. That is the scenario that I look at. But you know, Mr. Sen, you know, so you now, have to just to just to play the devil's advocate here. It is, it is, you know, the from the MLA's yeah. point of view, you know, those who, you know, we're, we're heading into elections in this area in just two days. Uh, the MLA was fairly confident that you know he would be able to travel in this area without any problems. He was familiar with the area. We are told very familiar with it. And I, I suppose, you know, from a politician's point of view, you do want to campaign, you do want to reach out to people. I think the bigger problem seems to be, uh, you know, why these ambushes keep happening, why these uh, attacks keep happening the way that they do. I mean, would you say, as someone who has seen this problem head on, that our security forces end up becoming sitting ducks in a situation like this? No, you see, this is not a problem which has just grown up. It is a problem which is allowed to remain for 15 or 20 years or even more. So you can't expect that problem to go away straight away. When and you say allowed to remain, what do you mean, sir? decided hmm. that he is so intelligent. Allowed to remain means by the, the past government, they have not been able to rule it out. The present government will take some time. And if the MLA thinks he is so clever as to browbeat uh, and know better than the intelligence, then I'm sorry. I, I really feel sorry for his family and for a person who is so overconfident about, confident about himself. Did he have any truck with uh, Naxals in the past when he was in power in the different government? I would like to ask questions like this rather than just pounce on the inefficiency or inadequacy of the intelligence and the police department. The police department today is being browbeaten by all sorts of uh, agencies. And I think they, they are not capable of resisting whatever they are getting at them. So this is the scenario we are looking at. 
it all depends on the present government how they handle the situation and how well, they are able you, to you've overcome. actually raised some but important points sir they, you've given us some food for thought no no you as the previous government yeah. they will have to buy it well, I have Sanjay Hegde, who's of course a senior advocate of the Supreme Court, joining us. Sanjay, in fact, has uh, you know often travelled to the Chhattisgarh High Court uh, and and uh, and fought cases there. And, and Sanjay Hegde, your quick thoughts uh, on on this you know t terrible story today? It is a terrible story, and I quite agree with what Mr. Sen says that. Everybody knows in, in, in Chhattisgarh what are the roads you, you avoid and, where, and what are the roads you go on. In fact, even lawyers who go there know enough to you know, disconnect their phones, not to, not to unnecessarily provoke or in places which are known to be dangerous. Uh, Politicians in election time tend to take risks. This politician seems to have taken the same risk that many politicians have taken with unsafe helicopters. They, uh, uh, he was warned there he, he, uh, and despite that he went. Now why, one thing about the Chhattisgarh insurgency. My personal feeling is that there is too much money which is invested in the insurgency. There are, there's too much money which goes there to the uh, central forces. There, there is money which comes from the uh, industrialist houses and the mining uh, lobbies out there, on which the uh, which the um, Naxalites uh, levy their own taxes, uh, and there's too much money sloshing around the system. The CRPF often is confined to its camps. Absolutely it, right. It Absolutely rarely right. steps out except on very sterile routes. We, if you want to solve the problem out there, you need the benevolent forces of the state or benevolent NGOs to really prepare the ground. You, do, you rarely hear of doctors being attacked. You rarely hear of journalists who, who report fairly being attacked. We but had a whoever is crew that was attacked. We had a Zootarshan crew that was attacked. You know, is, I, I, I understand what you're saying, Sanjay, and, and in fact, both you and Mr. Sen have raised some very I, a important Dhurdarshan points. Zootarshan crew was again part of the state. No, and, and, and I think you're right that there is a need to now look at this story to go beyond the usual sort of headlines uh, of, you know, attack happened, what, what was the CRPF lacking, what was the police lacking, and look at the deeper problem there uh, in this state. But, but thank you, Mr. Sen, uh, for, for speaking to us on this and being so forthright uh, in your views. Thank you for joining us uh, on, on that tonight.